backstabbing does happen. When I was at GS, someone told me, I can't say who, but they said in this industry, you have to kill or get killed. Get free premium access to all of my Skillshare courses on investment banking cover letters, divisions and CVs by clicking the link in the video description below. For those of you wondering, I did lots of internships across investment banks and after graduating, I spent over three years working at an investment bank called Goldman Sachs. To most people in the industry, Goldman Sachs is the pinnacle of high finance. But to the general public, Goldman Sachs is known as the corrupt government controlling vampire squid that created, took advantage of and got bailed out of the 2008 global financial crisis. And before you ask, don't worry, I'm no longer there. That's a bit of background on me. Now let's get back to the video. Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be reacting to episode two of Industry because a lot of you requested it. You all showed a lot of love to the reaction video for episode one. And believe it or not, I tweeted the reaction video for episode one and the directors, writers, and some of the cast retweeted it. And then some of the cast and the main character, Harper, actually followed me on Instagram, which was the last thing I expected. But there you go. Without any further ado, let's see what episode two has in store for us. He's wearing the finisher shirt. If you see anyone wearing a finisher shirt, it's the JP Morgan uh, 5K running challenge, and it typically says finisher. So small attention to detail, they got that right. Uh, most banks, or a lot of the banks, have gyms in their building, and you get a decent subscription, you get a decent rate on it. You do salary sacrifice, so any contribution towards your subscription, you don't pay tax on it, so you save money that way and it's even cheaper basically. Also, some of the banks, like at Goldman, there was a health center, so there's a GP downstairs. They take care of you in that sense. There was a GP, health center, there was a childcare, nursery, and yeah, a lot of these banks have everything to kind of make the employees feel like if they need to, if they feel unwell, they can go downstairs and be seen by a doctor or a GP. The gyms are state of the art, they have everything you need, and so anytime you're working and you wanna go down for a quick workout, you can work out or you might go for a workout in the afternoon or evening and then go back up to work. It'd be good to get off the desk sometime, have a debrief, coffee, beer, whatever. Talk about your progress, how to position yourself before riff. I'm evaluated on it, so. Yeah, yep. So coffee catch-ups is a very common thing, you know, catch up with people over a 30 minute walk or go and chill in the cafe or cafeteria area over a coffee you just talk get to know people ask them questions especially as an intern or an analyst you want to be doing these so you can learn more about the business learn more about people build your relationships with stakeholders around the business because when it comes to your reviews and you getting an offer or not those people will be vital in making a decision on whether you get an offer or not that'd be great tomorrow oh, no we have that grad dinner maybe friday yeah yeah. Um, in the day will be good because uh, I have plans with my boyfriend in the evening. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. I, no, you didn't mean that like that, did you? Uh, so, she thinks he's hitting on her. He's literally just doing his job and asking her or telling her it would be good to catch up, have these coffees. Obviously, She's an intern, she's new to this environment. And if you're new to an environment like that and no one's told you this is what you should keep an eye out for, this is what you should do, you're kind of oblivious. And so she's uh, reacted in the wrong way. She should have just took the meeting, put it in her calendar. She didn't need to mention she's got a boyfriend. She didn't need to pass it off like he's trying to move to her. But let's see what happens. Uh, she's pissed him off. So I she's pissed him off. He's not happy about that. I know for a fact a lot of people are active on the street. I want to know why the flows aren't coming. If you're wondering why is he in boxers, why is he in shorts, this isn't like you don't need to be surprised. A lot of people come in early morning, go to the gym, and they need to run to their desks before markets open. Whatever it might be, on the trading floor, you know, there's a lot of people that just don't care. So yeah, this is not a surprise. The guy gave me a free no, I just... Very, very important. A lot of students, graduates, they enter the workplace and they don't know the etiquette, especially on a trading floor. People are very busy. There's no time for politeness, manners, all of that. If you're in the middle of a phone call, you're gonna be engaged in that. That's the most important thing to you right now. And so obviously go drop a coffee, whatever you want. But sometimes you might have a question for someone. Don't just hover over their desk for 10 minutes if they're in the middle of something, it's just awkward. Uh, use your judgment, 
and go back to your desk, keep an eye on them and when they're free, when they've got a minute, then time it and go and talk to them. A lot of these people, once again, high pressure, environment, intense, they're working on 10 different things at once and it requires high levels of concentration. So you don't want to get in the way of that because some people will just get mad and that's the last thing you want. Oh, yes, yes. Absolutely not. That's like four each. I need to see another apartment. But my advice, turn up drunk. Easy. Oh, if there's one thing I learned about working in the city, people love to drink. You win a client, pop champagne. You win business, go for drinks. Thursdays, drinks. Fridays, Tuesdays, Mondays, Wednesdays, whatever. Everyone loves to drink. Having said this, I don't drink. People respect that. But there is a big drinking culture in the city. So do expect that if you're going in. This guy, I don't know, something about his face just annoys me. Not sure what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Thanks for your transcript, finally. But I have a few more questions. We wanted to ask you about any interactions you might have had with Hari. Whether he's compliance or HR, they are, obviously Hari is dead. The last thing the firm wants is they don't want the press to blame the firm. And so what I assume is gonna happen, he's gonna try and find out from the peers that Hari worked with or knew, whether he was taking any drugs or if there was anything outside of work related that they can kind of blame his death on. I think they're still figuring out a splashy response, press friendly. Hunger Fix pushed Goldman up to primary book runner. They don't want us anywhere near the top of the tombstone. Fucking bad PR. Sorry, what do you mean? This lady loves swearing, man. Mean tombstone. Yeah. You get a little trophy when you complete a deal. <laughs> tombstone. So this is actually a thing, every time you complete a deal they give you this little slab, they call it a tombstone. How ironic, especially after Hari passed away. Nobody is questioning your drive, but for me, please, come in later, leave earlier, decompress. Wow. I seem to be mismanaging you. Have you spoken to the councillor? I can't be seen to be mismanaging you. This, oh my god, I'm telling you now, like, this is a classic example of, in this case, an associate putting her career interests and her reputation ahead of you know the career or the development of that person junior to her in this case Gus and you see this a lot people want to get ahead people want to climb people want to develop and they want big bonuses and it's very selfish that she's just focusing about her and she's telling him you know come in later do this do that some of it is good advice to manage his obviously health and all of that so the same thing doesn't happen to him as the other junior, but a lot of it is self-centered. She's just thinking about her and her career. No. Even if you feel you don't need to, I need you to. Oh, <laughs> there you go, there you go. That's what I'm saying, it's good optics. Optics, you know. It wasn't a waste of time. He helped me reevaluate. The culture in IBD, so the investment banking division, more than any other division I would say is there's a lot of like analysts come in, do two years and they leave, come in and leave, come in and get fired, come in and go to a different industry. And so it's harder for the seniors, the associates, the VPs, directors to build good relationships with the juniors because before they know it, those juniors will be out of the business, they'll be gone somewhere else. And that kind of might play into the dynamic of poor relationships. Do you have access to the FX client tracker? I don't, we, um, we just don't have a full list of shared FX and CBS clients. Uh oh. I'm not sure I can share it with you. <laughs> yeah. oh, don't worry, I don't need full access, I just don't. One of my clients is double booked with one of your guys and um, you know how it is, I just wanna... If you're not allowed to share it, don't. If you get caught, if compliance catch you, you're getting fired, so don't. Even if it's a friend or someone you work closely with and you know, or you know, and they're asking for access to something that you know you shouldn't be giving access to, don't risk it. If unsure or if in doubt, leave it out. If in doubt, don't do it. In this case, Harper's asking for some confidential information on uh, Yasmin's desk's clients. Harper and her managing director probably want access to that client. A lot of people on the trading floor compete with each other. A lot of divisions compete with each other for the same clients, believe it or not, even if you're working for the same organization. An example would be, let's say, a big business like YouTube. They might have money with the investment banking division. They might be working with them on taking over 
Vimeo, for example. And then the sales and trading division might be investing money for YouTube. And then the asset management division might be managing YouTube's pension fund. So at YouTube, there might be a key person who is working with the investment banking division. And so the sales and trading people might also be in touch with that person. And then different people on the trading floor or in different divisions like the asset management business might also wanna reach out to this person because this key decision maker can unlock the doors to YouTube's money for this investment bank. And so there's a lot of interests around similar clients, even if you're working for one investment bank. So you're competing with different divisions in your company. I own Alpha King. Sure. Yeah. Um, what's your client's name? Oh no, she's sharing it. Ah <laughs> oh, shit, he's not there. My bad. See you at the dinner. Okay. Thank you. Always say thank you. You know, we're human. Just say thanks. Even though she kind of just did something slight, but it's good to say thanks. I asked for free torch. <laughs> you never asked for free torch. <laughs> Taish! Croutons, do I eat them? This guy, I'm man. passionate about croutons. Remember, all the best friendships start with conspiracy. Okay, Kenny. Best part of the day, Yasmin's trade idea. Be ready to have your mind oh, detonated. Wait, just... This is for your gross, okay? You're part of this day. Oh, uh, what a treat. Get free premium access to all of my Skillshare courses on investment banking cover letters, divisions, and CVs by clicking the link in the video description below. Pull up a few. And uh, imagine I burst into flames when I'm bored. Go! Um, what the hell? Okay, I thought we could short cable. What's cable? Um, John Sterling. Well, so you're going to talk about Europe then? What's your target and stuff? Uh, 1.25 to 1.35. So a symmetric bet from 1 spot 3 0. Why not just flip a coin? Put it all on black? The art here is to look like you're not doing that. Yeah, I just thought with everything that's going on with the art at the moment oh, that we could fucking specific. This is a good example of why you should always have, if you're on the trading floor, have your pitch ready for an investment idea. If the market's going up in a specific sector or if it's going down, just have one or two good ideas in the back of your mind. Not just, not because someone's going to tell you sit on a bin and present like this. This is extremely rude. But if you're in a conversation with someone, if you're in a catch up, if you're speaking to someone, a managing director or anyone more senior to you, just general chit chat, you never know what might come up in conversation. And so it's good to have a few ideas in the back of your head that you can just speak about at length. So it shows you're well researched, you're up to date with what's going on in the markets and your commercial awareness is up to scratch. What time's it in? Four. So she found out what time this client is in. So what this guy's gonna do, I'm guessing, is gonna go and gate crash that meeting or somehow time it so he bumps into the client because he wants to win that business. He's got a baseball bat, you see props across the trading floor. Rugby balls, baseball bats, helmets, whatever it is, this is normal. You rounded 350? There you go, 350, 10 minutes before the meeting. He's gonna bump into him or go and see him. Yeah. Why? There are many aspects of this job that you'll learn by osmosis. <laughs> like horse whispering, soft climb. It's an art. I'm giving you FaceTime with the guy who gets us all paid. Must Come be on. a big plan. Take a swing. Here we go. They go into the meeting 10 minutes before the client's actual meeting. Fellow, I knew you'd be 10 minutes early for your meeting. Had it. This actually happened, believe it or not. Going back to the previous example that I mentioned, when a client is a client of different divisions of the investment bank or different desks on the trading floor, and that client has potential to bring in a lot of money, which then feeds down into your bonus and all of that and your development or climbing the corporate ladder, people do mad stuff to get time with these clients because this client probably has so many other businesses, other companies reaching out to him for his money. And so these you know, sales tactics are vulture-like. They have to, you have to think outside the box. Some of it is so direct, but it happens. To introduce you to one of our brightest grads. Harper Stern. No handshake, interesting. Right. We actually already emailed and sent you that US tail risk stuff. Well, that was you, that was excellent. Yeah, thank you. Please. Classic. Those, like those, those biscuits are nice, I'm not gonna lie, but you shouldn't be the first to take it, obviously. Offer the client a tea, a coffee, whatever it is. 
and then get comfortable. Hmm. Why didn't you speak up? Sorry if I didn't know that you wanted me to. I don't need quiet and nice on my desk. As a junior, intern, analyst, whatever it might be, oftentimes when you get taken to meetings, you don't know if you should contribute, you should say something, or you're just there to take notes. So always it's good to build a rapport or relationship with your manager or your senior, whoever's taking you into that meeting. Before a meeting, ask them, is there anything you want me specifically to do, say, or focus on in the meeting? That way you're aware of the expectations going in. So you're not confused later why what the expectation was or why they're wondering why you didn't contribute or if you say something in the meeting when you wasn't meant to it's just good to have that conversation beforehand this is a dinner that the firm have put on for the interns and these happen a lot you get you know taken to nice restaurants dinner uh, oftentimes which i'm sure is going to happen one or two people will get out of hand drink a bit too much uh, and it's always like I didn't drink so it's always funny to see how as the night goes on people's personalities come out people get drunk you see them in a different light to how they are on the desk and it's always interesting you are looking more and more like pair point people enjoy dead speech how's the atmosphere been in IBD? yeah it's been fine um Lucinda mentioned there were going to be some changes in the team. Oh, well, this isn't the place for that discussion. There'll be a meeting on one. Are there going to be cuts? Ho oh, ho, There's going to be a restructuring. Point. This is probably the last thing he wants to hear. Whenever you hear there's restructuring or changes in the teams, you know, as a junior, you're probably either going to have to join a different team or there might not be head count. So any roles available to join that team full time, but let's see. What does that mean for us, for me, Lucinda? There's a VP spot in oil and gas for Lucinda. What about me? We appreciate your talent. We're keen to rehouse you where there's headcount. Where? CPS desk. Oh. I don't want to sound um, entitled. <laughs> I applied for IBD and I really don't want to work on the trading floor. This happens a lot um, within divisions. So if you join one uh, team or one desk, you might end up joining a different desk full time if there's restructuring changes or no headcount. My advice to you is beggars can't be choosers. If you're an intern, you're at the bottom of the food chain. Take what you can get, get your foot in, you can move later on. Your career is long, 30, 40 years. The first one or two years isn't gonna dictate the rest of your life. So yes, you want what you applied for, but think long term. So what are we gossiping about? <laughs> This goes back to what I mentioned earlier. Timing, social cues, knowing how to conduct yourself and talk to people will go a long way in work and in general life. I'm having a private conversation. Okay. Sorry, I thought I had my name. Yes, well, this may sound deeply strange, but we weren't talking about you. Okay, I thought you were looking over at me. I'm looking at you either. Oh, shit. Shop being horror. It, nobody gives a f about what I think about you, or, or, or what you think about me, nobody gives a f It's the problem with this industry, they keep hiring these f princesses. Ouch, this guy's going a bit far. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> hey, buddy! Hey, Harper to the rescue. Some people, honestly, like, this is why you need a good group of peers or friends like wherever you work and in life in general you need people that will have your back if you've got people that will just sit there silent and watch you get you know destroyed those ain't the people to be around harper's got her back it's a good friend to have <laughs> don't talk to her like that Major business no don't talk to her like that off. yeah jeez temper temper yes what kenny go home <laughs> so important yes if you do that you risk burning bridges or getting into trouble but honestly it comes to a point where principle is more important some people will say nah it's good to brown nose and forget principle just you want to get your offer find the right balance between the two if you need to but yeah go off Eric don't start go on 
Good night, all. <clears throat> no one's gonna give you agency. You have to take you have to it. Take it. Oh, yeah. He said it's on Eric's account. Oh. Oh. Well, so this is classic. After a late night, after a long night out, everyone's just off their head. They're either drunk or just you know they're in a different state to what you see them on in the desk, um, and everyone's just calling cabs to get home. Definitely. Getting Once again, you have to take all of this with a pinch of salt. Very important to keep in mind that this is a series, this is a show, it's made to get ratings and reviews. Now, the reason I say that is because previously, in the first reaction video, someone commented and they said, what, after watching this, I'm, I'm changing my degree that I'm studying, I don't want to go into banking, etc, etc. Which is fair, but I would say don't make those type of decisions based on one series because this show is showing, firstly, it's not showing the back office of an investment bank, so technology or engineering, HR, finance, operations, risk, all of that. It's not covering those areas. It's primarily focusing on two divisions in the front office, so the investment banking division and the sales and trading division. Arguably, these two divisions are the most high pressure, the most intense and the longest hours in the whole of the investment bank. There are other front office divisions like the asset management division, private banking, etc, etc. Work-life balance is better and it's generally a more pleasant experience. And so before you make any rash decisions, you know, do your research and talk to people in the industry to get an idea of what is real, what is fake. Hopefully some of these videos can be informative and educational for you. But, you know, you the, the person that put that note in, they said they're going to do computer science, which is great. But don't just rule out your whole future prospects of working in the city. Working in the city has very strong exit opportunities. So that brings me on to point number two. A lot of people commented on reaction video one, why would anyone work in this type of industry when it's so grueling, it's just not a welcoming working environment, so on and so forth. And the reason is most people go into this industry, go into front office roles because they know the exit opportunities are very, very, strong and they can like most people go into this industry they know it's going to be two years of hard graft putting in work and then they know after that once you've got jp morgan on your cv or goldman sachs on your cv whatever it might be the exit opportunities open up for you you can go and join practically any other investment bank or any other firm because in those two years you have worked your ass off and you've developed so many soft and hard skills that position you well when it comes to applying for other types of roles. So it's two years of hard graft, but it does create a very strong platform for your career going forward. If you're in a position like Gus, where you are interning and you don't get the position in a team that you applied for, this happens so much, my advice to you is take any offer you can get. Like the main thing as an intern in an investment bank, you wanna get your foot in. You wanna convert that to a grad scheme and then see what doors you can open later on. Don't be stubborn and say, oh, I'm not getting an offer in the team that I applied to, so I'm not gonna take any offers from this firm. The key as a student, as a recent graduate, whatever it might be, get as many offers as you can, lock in that insurance, get that safety net, and then move forward accordingly. It's better to have some offers rather than just be too proud and arrogant and then lock off every offer because you're just gonna end up shooting yourself in the foot. As episode two showed us, you can see slowly as the episodes will go on, a lot of pressure and intensity is building up. This will be you know, dealt with differently by each of the analysts or interns. And so some will flourish under this pressure. I guess Harper is gonna do well, I assume. And I'm guessing, if I were to guess, maybe it's gonna eat up Yasmin a bit. It's gonna to be too hard for her to control, especially because she's got that guy, the trader, who pretty much has it in for her. He doesn't like her one bit. He's extremely rude, all of that. So it'll be interesting to see how she manages that dynamic. But yeah, as the season goes on, it's gonna be interesting to see how things heat up a bit more. Internal politics is a thing. This is very important. You don't see it as much as an intern or in your first year, but as you spend more time in the industry, you realize the more senior you get, the more your salary is paid in stock and the more the bonuses are larger for you as you get senior or for the work that you're doing in your team. You see people with hidden agendas, you see people try and be more, a bit more sly or they can potentially backstab you. And this is a thing in the industry because when you're you know, when you can bring in a client that is potentially gonna make you rich 
or give you a paycheck or a bonus of a couple hundred grand, you're gonna try and find ways to go to that meeting. You're gonna try and find, find ways to kind of get ahead of your peers or anyone else on the trading floor to win that business. And so internal politics is a thing, backstabbing does happen. When I was at GS, someone told me, I can't say who, but they said in this industry, you have to kill or get killed. And it was on the back of someone outplaying or outsmarting or backstabbing someone in a different division but I can't say anything more about that so we'll leave that there. Once again it's not everyone in the industry it's a handful of people uh, and it's more common in the front office so the revenue generating client facing business areas as opposed to the non-revenue generating and back office areas. A lot of people clocked on that the first episode and the second episode an absurd amount of adultery and drug usage you know, the adultry is happening in people's own spaces outside of work, so fair enough. But the drug usage, it happens, but one caveat, drug usage is more likely in the investment banking division and the trading division, sales and trading. Because it's more intense, hours are longer, drug usage happens in every industry, I'm sure, but more so in high intense industries. Other areas of the investment bank, the front office, include the asset management business, private banking, so on and so forth. I worked in the asset management business, I'm sure people took drugs there, but obviously once again it's a show, it's been glorified to a certain extent. If you enjoyed this video, do consider giving it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts on episode two. Let me know if you want reaction video free next week, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.